keep on triggering them all. Sony a7R Mark III for video. Does it suck? Is it great? Can it replace our Canon cameras? We'll find out in this review. My name is Damien Cooper and welcome to Market Fix. We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. So what we did is we um, went to our friends here in Vienna, it's called Digital Store, and they were so kind to give us the A7R Mark III for a day, including the 24-70 2.8 G Master, as well as the 50mm 1.8. So what we did is, since you already know us guys, we don't like to just shoot in our house, do some stuff. We really want to test it in a real live um, environment and to actually shoot a video. This time it's a new camera, we never really used it before. So obviously we can't shoot any commercial work for an actual client. So what we did is we took Belle, we dragged her in front of the camera and shot a cinematic sequence with her uh, just to find out how good that camera really is. So in order to test this camera and if it works for us, we wanted to have it in daylight as well as a little bit of golden hour and of course since we really like shooting in low light we tested the low light performance as well. So as I've already mentioned we got the 24-70 G Master 2.8 as well as the 50mm or 55mm 1.8. We ended up not using the latter because for some reason I didn't really feel the need to switch back and forth if I already have that focal length on the 24-70 and the uh, aperture difference isn't really that big of a deal and doesn't make up for such a huge difference that I really wanted to deal with all the changing lenses and stuff. So what we did is, because that is like really what this camera would be for. Because we as professional filmmakers, we usually use really high-end equipment, uh, actual cinema cameras with a lot of additional equipment. So we're used to having all these external monitors and all that kind of stuff. But of course, all this equipment is really heavy and if we wanted to use an A7R3 or the A7 III, we would definitely use it for as a behind the scenes camera, as a, you know, just uh, run and gun shooting while traveling, maybe even vlogging. So that would actually be the sole purpose of a smaller DSLM compared to our uh, Canon 1DX we use right now, or as um, our C200 we use for the bigger client jobs. So in that case, I think it was a really good decision to just go with one lens. So obviously, since we only had this one lens, we didn't have a macro lens, which we like to use for most of our shoots, because to throw in some of these really crisp macro shots, details of eyes, of uh, stuff around in the environment, that also helps us tell a story a little bit more in detail. But as I was mentioning earlier, as a uh, all around small camera that you can carry around anywhere, I think the tw uh, 24 to 70 2.8G Master, although it's really big for 24 to 70, fits the A7R3 pretty well, because with this camera now and this setup, you are really versatile. It's still really lightweight compared to our other cameras. And you have the entire focal length from 24 to 70 with the 2.8 aperture, which is still fairly wide open. And it's also pretty great for photography. So I I think this is a good display of a real world scenario. Okay, so besides the fact that I'm used to shooting with a real cinema camera, so I have internal ND filters, I have ray forms on my monitor, I have focus peaking, I have the ability to put LUTs on top of my lock footage so that I can actually see what I'm shooting and the way it's supposed to look in the end. Besides all that, because that's it's still a DSLM, it's a small camera. Uh, I didn't have all that, but if I don't really think about all these facts and just uh, focus on the camera at hand and compare to other cameras in that price category as well as focus group, I really, really liked it. So when I started filmmaking, I had a Sony a7 II. I then upgraded to an a7S II and then upgraded to an A9 later on. So these cameras are really great for run and gun shooting, for small filmmaking jobs. And what I really like about it is that they're really versatile. Uh, Sony comes up with new features that are really astounding for the price range they're in. But what I didn't really like about all the Sony cameras that I had before was the color science. Everybody's talking about it. Canon's color science is just amazing because you don't really have to tweak the footage that much to get an actual real life natural result. And of course the skin tones. I was never a fan about the Sony image because it's so yellowish, greenish, it's really hard to get the skin tones right. So what I heard is that they actually improved on that with their new Sony cameras. So I was really curious to get our hands on the A7R3 
and test this out for ourselves. So we shot the entire video in a picture profile. It's called Picture Profile 6. It's a mixture between Cinephore and Cinema Gamut. I didn't really want to shoot an S-Log since S-Log is really hard to expose right and not really fit for a running gun shooting. Since I didn't have a cable to hook up our small HD focus to the Sony, I was limited to the on-camera screen. With that, it's really hard to get the exposure right because uh, first of all, we shot the entire video on the Xeon Crane 2. It blocks a little bit of the uh, display, so it was really hard to see what you're shooting at the right time since it doesn't have a flip out screen. The next thing is that the on-camera display is really small and when you're shooting in a flat profile, you can't really see all your exposure right. You don't have waveforms but that is a thing I think none of the small cameras have. So I didn't really want to shoot S-Log because I didn't really want to mess up the exposure because I couldn't really control it on camera as much. So I decided to go with the somewhat flat profile, which also grades pretty nicely. And that is a mixture between Cinephore and Cinema Gamut. So we wanted to go for this dreamy look. And since we're shooting most of our B-roll in 100 or 120 frames anyway, we shot this entire video in 100 frames in full HD because you can shoot 100 frames or even 50 or 60 frames in 4K on this camera. So we didn't get to test the 4K, but as far as I'm concerned, since the color science, it's still an 8-bit 420 codec, it doesn't really change a lot other than the crispness. For this video, we just shot everything entirely in full HD. So one thing that I'm looking forward in a camera that shoots 100 or 120 frames is no sensor crop. I hate when cameras crop in when you're using higher frame rates as the A7S II for example does. Whenever you're shooting in 100 or 120 frames, it crops in as much as 2.2 times, which is insane. So it's really hard to get the same image in uh, 25 frames as well as in 100 frames because you're cropping in so much that you have to uh, definitely use a different lens or just step way back to get the same kind of framing. So when I'm looking for a camera that shoots high frame rates, I really wanted to have the full sensor readout and the A7R 3 does exactly that, which I really like. So I usually like cameras to be a little bit bigger because that way it just feels sturdy in my hand and I feel that I can handheld uh, shoot uh, more stable footage than I can with these flimsy small cameras that have a lot of camera shake. As for the A7R 3 body, I think they improved on it a lot since um, their really first beginnings because it feels a little beefier although it's not a lot bigger. If any. So that way the camera is really light, it's also really small, um, so it fits on a gimbal perfectly. It's the perfect run and gun gimbal camera and unlike the, uh, our other cameras, it never hit anywhere on the gimbal, even though we used this huge 24-70 to 2.8 lens. The Xeon Crane, for example, it could handle the weight and the dimensions of the camera very easily. So we could go into underslug mode really easily uh, without any problems. And we had the full range of motion on a gimbal, which we usually don't have with any of our bigger cameras. So as for the sharpness of the image, obviously our Canon cameras, they're all prone to having really really soft full HD, which a lot of people like because it gives this dreamy look in slow motion, but also uh, I like to have the option to have it a little bit sharper. So I was really surprised about the Sony camera because even at 100 frames per second, it was really crisp and sharp, which I really liked about it. Also the fact that it records audio at 100 frames is also pretty cool because then when you need to match something or you have some bloopers, it's a nice added feature. Okay, and yet. Nein. Was war das? Ich <lacht> 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 So, since we shot this entire video on the gimbal, we used the autofocus a lot. We didn't use it 100% of the time, mainly because uh, when she was twirling and twisting around in the scene um, on this alleyway behind the trees and everything, the autofocus just couldn't keep up because she was uh, moving left and right. And for some reason, which I was really surprised about, that the face detection autofocus doesn't work in 100 frames, which I'm fairly certain it did on the A9, and it also does work on the 1D. Mark II. So that I was a little bit disappointed of. But in general, I think the autofocus did a great job at least during the day. Um, during the nighttime, it started to struggle a lot. So obviously, um, we put it in an extreme situation. There was this one shot where Belle is really dark outside and she's standing in front of a street light. So we have a lot of backlight situations, which is definitely the worst situation an autofocus can encounter. It's low light, it's also backlit. 
and the camera started to struggle a lot. So these shots, we had to use uh, manual focus as well as a shot where she was moving in and out of focus a lot because even though I put the autofocus responsiveness lower, it still picked up way too quickly for the background to change. So for cinematic movements, um, I'm not 100% sure if I really like the autofocus on this camera. If I were to shoot some vlogging and I wanted to have my, my face in focus all the time or if I'm shooting some events where I really need to switch the focus points in and out and it really needs to um, track a subject I think it actually works great so speaking of manual focus obviously what I like about most Sony lenses especially the new ones is that they have a really big focus ring so it makes uh, pulling focus manually very easy the camera also does offer focus peaking although on such a small monitor I really had a hard time getting the focus right via focus peaking because it's really really small on the display as well as if you're shooting in a flatter profile it's really hard to judge it so what I recommend is definitely get an external monitor with all these features waveforms focus speaking some other focus assists if you're serious about shooting video with a camera like that yeah. in the front row kicking back old school trash like them can't get enough of this more like I don't need no so as for our low light testing this is the part where i was really disappointed about we shot at different iso levels i think at one point we shot about at 3200 up to 4000 and then we went to the next stage where it was really dark outside so we had to crank up the iso to at least 6400 i think and that's when the camera totally fell apart i was afraid of that happening in the beginning because the camera has uh 42 megapixels which is huge and the more megapixels you have uh, the worse the low light performance usually gets and in that scenario um, the footage was almost unusable for that video we cranked up neat video on top of it uh, obviously now the footage is really muddy it's way too soft it's still usable if you can fix it in post but for my taste the low lights was way too bad to actually use it uh, on a regular basis. So what's our verdict on the a7R 3 for video? Yes, it's a great camera. I think if you're just using it for video, there might be better options, especially the just released a7 III. We didn't get our hands on it yet. We will try to get one soon, but considering it's a thousand dollars cheaper and has basically the same video specs, maybe even better since I think it has uh, autofocus face detection as well as probably better low light performance, uh, I think that might actually be the choice for you. But if you're taking, leaning more towards the photography side, I think it's a great camera for you. Paired with all these awesome video functions that the camera has, 100 frames per second with full sensor readout at full HD, although it shoots 4K, um, it has dual card slots, which is always good if you're leaning towards a, a professional side of videography as well as photography. And it also has uh, flat picture profiles, which is a must have for any video shooter out there. We also used the camera to shoot a little bit of photos and I was amazed by it. I mean, I was amazed by all recent Sony cameras when it came to photo. And probably if I was just a photographer, I would probably entirely switch to Sony and that's about it. So if you're interested in the photos we shot, uh, go to our Instagram account MonkeyPixel so you can check out some of the pictures we um, shot on set. What I would love about this camera to have is better higher quality recording options um, since I think it maxes out at 100 megabits per second bitrate and I think I'd rather have something around 300, 400 that fits the camera a little bit better. So what did I like about this camera? I like that it had a good enough autofocus, that it was versatile, it is small, it has 100 frames per second shooting at full HD on the full sensor readout. I did like the colors better than the ones before, although I'm not 100% sure if they changed something or if I just gotten better at grading stuff. I will try to figure that out in another video. I still think it's not the right camera for us per se right now, so we will look into the a7 III and still um, looking towards the a7S Mark III whenever it will come out because the low light capabilities shrug me off as well as the missing face detection autofocus. Overall I think it's a really great camera if you're leaning towards the photography side and want to shoot on the lower end stuff uh, it's still a really great camera to have. 
So if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up, maybe share it with your friends and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel to see more content, more little videos, as well as reviews, making offs, and maybe even some production vlogs in the future. I guess that's it. Old school crash like damn. Can't get enough of this more like I don't even know where I am. Ooh, baby, get hyped to the beat. Let's go, cause this is our jam. This is our jam.